general scenario. Before we start, I want to explain some basic con concepts related to these different library terms and what we can do with them. So the first thing I want to show here in this example is that we have a library, it's called Internal Regulations Library. This library has a certain amount of documents and a certain amount of labels. So here we can see we have the name of the document, the version, the creator, the status. And over here we have a process that's called documentary management. This is the reference of the process. And in a certain form, we can see that they've placed a library field. Here we can see there's another process, a different process. It's of the same class of process, but it's a different instance of a process. And we're also using the same library field. Okay, So this library field that we're seeing here is going to display all the documents that are uploaded into the library. But if we access the library from a process, we're only going to see those documents that were attached to that process. For example, here we can see we've attached a document to this process. And now it's appearing in our library. Down here, we've attached another document to this process. And we can see the result here. So when we access the library, if we access the library directly, let's say we access through the link, through the URL, we're going to see all the documents that have ever been uploaded to this library. Manually or automatically, because maybe in the process we've set up a system task to automatically generate a document and store it in this library, or maybe we've uh, moved documents from one library to another one, or whatever. So anything that has been done from a process is going to be displayed here in this library. So let's say I'm in a process, and this one here, and I want to delete a document. So I take one of these documents off, or all of them from all these different processes. Well, then obviously they're also going to disappear from the from the library we access through the link. When I'm saying that we're accessing through the link, I mean is when we enter the, the application, we go to structure and we can create libraries. And each library has a link. For example, here, when we go to grid configuration, here we can copy the link. Okay. And by doing so, I can access all the content of this library. Here we can see it's empty. Anyways, if I use this exact same library in a process, in the process, I'm only going to be able to see the documents that I've been uploading in that process, even though it's the same library. The next thing I'm going to do is show you this process, how it's configured, how it's, uh, well, all the features it has. And we're going to be able to learn a lot about document management because we're gonna see a lot of the features that can be used for example, in a document management process. First of all, we have a start message event where someone has to input some information. Based on the information input, we're going to start to trigger a set of system tasks that we're not going to see in detail now, but I am going to explain just briefly. So basically here, we upload several documents to different libraries. We fill in a form. And later on here, there's a system task it allows us to upload library documents into the panel. So what it's doing here, it's bringing documents from outside of the process, from another library term that we have somewhere, and it's bringing them into the process. Afterwards here, there's a system task that's going to be moving documents from one library to another one. So basically it's copying documents and moving them somewhere else. Afterwards here we have a task where we're gonna check all the documentation and we're gonna make sure all the information is correct. Later on here, we're going to update some documents. Basically, what we're going to do is modify the labels. So basically, initially, they had a status. Each document had a certain status or certain value in a label. And down here, it has to change. So we're going to see how to change the labels. Here, we're also going to see how to clean or remove documents that haven't been used. Okay, so maybe we had several copies. Some of these copies aren't needed anymore. So here, we can delete them. Later on here, we're going to move some documents from one library to another one. Here we're going to convert documents to PDF. We're also going to sign them at the same time. So we're going to automatically sign documents and convert them to PDF. Down here, we're going to send documents to the printer. So we're going to indicate, OK, I want all the documents that are in such and such library to be sent to the printer. 
Here, there's someone who's going to have to scan the documents that have been sent to the printer. And once they've scanned them, they're going to be uploaded into the into the form. After this here, we have a, not, a notifier system test that's going to send documents to someone via email. And later on, we're going to update all the document status. So we're going to change again the labels of the documents. I'm not going to explain them all now because first of all, I want to explain a bit the theory, how this works. But the first thing I would like to show is how this start message event is configured and what it does. So the first thing I'm going to do is click on it. Now, I want to show you an option here that says default data. So when I click on it, I can see here by default, there's been a document uploaded. This means that this document is going to be copied into each instance of a process. Each time a process starts, this library is going to contain this document because we've indicated that in default data of this class of process, we want to attach a document. Afterwards, we could enter the configuration of the form and see all the details. But basically, what I want to explain is, for example, here in the group of fields, we have a column of the type library. We can see here it's called contract details. If I enter, I can see it's a library type field. So we can attach documents per each line that's been uh, generated in this group of fields. Afterwards here we have some, I don't know, comment field. We have another field for default documents. So here it says, these documents are automatically loaded for any new hiring. Okay, so basically here, what we're going to display in this, uh, in this library, is a document that we're uploading here in default data. We can see it's default documents and the name of this library is default documents. Later on here where it says personal documents, we're going to attach some documents. We're going to attach, for example, uh, the CV of the person who wants to be hired, the ID card, the bank data, and things like that. Afterwards, I'm going to check that the user has actually uploaded those documents correctly. And I'm also going to create a contract for each one of the candidates that have been added to this group of fields at the beginning of the form. So these two buttons, one of them is going to be able to check the amount of documents that have been attached to the form. And this one here is going to create a document for each candidate. After that, we're going to launch a process. So until now, I'm just going to explain this, and I'm going to start the process. So I can click on Start Process. And the first thing I want to do is add some candidates. Here I could add the name. Here I could add contract details. One second. I'm not going to add anything here. Okay, I'm just going to leave it empty. But we'll see what happens later on here with this field. I'll add, for example, the contract has to be from the 8th to the 14th. And I'm going to add another one. Okay. This one's going to be hired from the 15th to the 21st. Okay, I'll save and exit. We've got two candidates here. Here I just have to add some text. I'm not really going to bother. I'll just add whatever text. Okay, there I have some text. Now here we can see this library field already has a, a document by default. I didn't have to touch it. It already appears here in the form. This is because here in default data in the star message event, we indicated that we wanted this to happen. Okay. We scroll down a little bit and here we can see it says personal documents, integrate the, the, the following documents, the CV, the ID card and the bank data. So this is what we're going to do now. We're going to attach some documents here. If we want to attach documents, we can click here on the little plus symbol. I could go to my desktop, for example. And here I have a few documents. You can see there's three PDF documents. I can attach them here. There they go. And here it says checking in and sending. Okay, so the last thing I need to do is check that everything was uploaded correctly. This is going to 
it's going to check how many documents I've actually uploaded here and of what of what type of documents are they, if they're PDF, if, what, what format, if they're a Word document, etc. So I'll click on Check Documents, and here we can see it tells us three. There has been three documents attached. And then down here it says Create Contract Details. So we know when we go here, it doesn't really have any documents. Okay, so these lines don't have any information. But when I click here, this little window pops up and it allows me to create several documents. For example, I could create an Excel document, an HTML document, a PDF document, a document with links to another document. Okay, this, these basically what they are, they're base documents have been previously defined and I can select one of them to create it. And it's gonna be stored, once it's been created, it's gonna be stored in each line of the group of fields. And we're gonna see something quite interesting about this. So I'm going to click on this button here and I'm going to click create a PDF document. There we go, the documents have been created. So now I can enter the line where it says David Sorensen and I can see a new document has been created. Let me check the content of this document and it says this is a, a document created in PDF format. Once created, it's stored in the library column of the candidates line in the group of fields. Every line in the group of fields has data. Line one has the information or data stored in line one, line two has the data stored in line two, and so on. I only created two lines. Okay, and here it says, the data displayed in this document is retrieved from the data stored in one line of the group of fields. So basically the information that's popping up here into my document, it's only the information of the line where I actually uh, created uh, the data of, for this candidate. David Sorensen. So here we can see the start date is the 8th of the 3rd. And here we can see this is true, the 8th of the 3rd. But the information of this other line is not appearing in the document. Okay. Let me go back. Here we go. And then it says the document can combine data of one line with the rest of data stored in the process panel. So for here, for example, we have the reference or the process start date. This is common information of the process, it's not related to one line of the group of fields, okay? So here we can see the document that has been generated. Let me go back to the second line, okay? We already checked this line here and the document that was generated. I'm gonna go down here. I'm gonna click here, I'm gonna click on the viewer, and here we can see that the information that's stored in the document is related to the second line of the group of fields. So here we can see it says Jim Lee, and it's got the information of the contract start date of Jim Lee. If I go back, we can see that it's correct, okay? It's retrieving the information of this line and creating a document for each line, an independent document for each line of this, uh, of this group of fields. Now, how did we do this? Let me check the configuration. The first thing we need to do is create a base document. So I need to go to the main configuration window of my class of process. I need to go to base documents. And here I can create as many base documents as I want. I could create one, two, three, four, as many as I want. Let me create another one. So basically I give my base document a name. I could create it in HTML, in Word, or in Excel. Obviously if we create it in Word, we can afterwards convert it to PDF. So let's create it in Word. Let's give it a name. And I hit the button continue. Now, here I can edit the base document. This is something you guys already know how to do. But when we edit the base document, one second, here we go. When we click on select data source, we go to the panel. And here we can see all the list of fields. We can also see the, the group of fields. Let me see. Okay, these are all the general terms. For example, the star message creator, the base reference. So this is common data for the entire process. It's not based on the information of the group of fields. Now here, we can create a recursive paragraph. This means that we could add an entire, the entire content of a group of fields inside of the document. So let's say, for example, here, I select the candidate name, the start date, the end date, and that's it. I add it here. 
So here we have all the information that we want in our document. But let's say that once we've created our document, here we say that the destination of our document, here we can say it's a panel field. And instead of selecting a library field that's in the panel, we're going to select a library field that's inside of a group of fields. For example, this one here, contract details. So what's going to happen? The document, each document is going to be created, one per each line of the group of fields, and it's going to be stored in each line. And besides, the content of the document is only going to show the information of that line, not of all the lines. Okay? So we already saw an example on how to use recursive paragraphs in, in a previous course. But now we're also seeing that if we indicate that the destination library that's going to store the doc base document, if it's a column of a group of field, it's going to create as many documents as lines in the group of fields. Okay. I'm not going to save this. I'll just leave it as it is. So this is part of the configuration, creating the base document and making sure that the destination is a column of a group of fields. And then we go here to the button and we click on add actions. We add an action that's called automatic document. And once we add it down here, we can add all the base documents that we have previously created. Okay, so here we can see if we add more than one, we could actually ask the user when he clicks on the button, okay, now tell me which one of these four do you want to create? That's why when the user clicks on the button, it actually pops up with this grid indicating all the possible formats or documents that he can create. Obviously, if here in this, in this option where it says performers permissions, if we say we want to create them all, then the system wouldn't ask him anymore because every time he clicks on the button, it's going to create all of them. But if we click on select on execution, it means that until the user has clicked on a certain on a certain document he wants to create, it's not going to be created. The last thing I want to do is launch this process. So here we know we've created two lines. There's been documents created inside of each one of these lines. Here we've added some comments. Here we have default documents. And here we've attached these three documents. If I want, I could even attach more. It says these are automatically loaded, but if I want, I still have permissions to attach more. This all depends on permission level. So depends of what we need. We can actually enable these options for the user or, or disable them. So I'm going to start the process. There we go. The process has been triggered. I'm going to go to reports. And I'm going to monitor this, this process. It's this one here. And here we can see we've already launched one of these processes. I'm going to click on it to see what's happened with it. Here we can see the flow went from the star message event through this system task, through this other system task, and into this personal task. And it stopped here. So here, this, in this personal task, apparently, the user can see less information. They can only see the information for the contract. And then here it says remove the non applicable contracts and keep the documentation. Anyways, basically the user can select which ones he wants, which ones, which documents he doesn't want. For example, okay, we we don't need uh, John's bank details and we don't need uh, his CV. For example, I know this is a bad example, but I'm just trying to show you guys different features. So here we can see in a in a form we can select one or more documents. And later on, based on these selections, we can trigger different actions. For example, we could say, okay, I want to send the two documents that were selected here, I want to send them to a printer, or I want to send them to a different library, or I want to send them for approval. Okay, so we can also add human interaction, and based on this human interaction, we could do things with the documents. Okay, so basically, he selected two of these, and that's about it. Okay, and then it says send contract to the printer. So only the documents that I've checked here before, before sending it to the printer are going to be printed. If I click on continue process, the flow is going to continue through the other system tasks. And here we can see there's one of them somewhere that prints the documents. Okay, here, this one over here. I'm going to stop the demonstration now because I've already seen, shown part of the process and how it works and different features that it has. I'm going to go back to the presentation and then we'll continue with the process.